Watch Mr. Wizard. That's what all the kids in the neighborhood call him because he shows them the magic and mystery of science in everyday living. Mr. Wizard! Oh, hi, Rita. Come on in. Hi. Hi. I was just checking out my projector there to see that it was all right because uh, you probably don't recognize who that is. But I'm going to wait till it gets through to the white and you'll uh, later on be able to see some of it. Because today, you and I are going on a trip to a world that is very, very beautiful, but which you have never been before in your beautiful. whole life. Yes. Mm -hmm. And right. we're going to later on see it on film, but we're also going to look at it through the microscope. Mm -hmm. And uh, while you've seen this world, you've never seen it in quite the same way before. So let me, first of all, introduce you to the beautiful world in which we are going to go. All right. See this orange? Mm -hmm. Well, no, there's no. the beautiful world we're going to go into. That's the beautiful world. Yes. What's the matter with that orange? It's not exactly very beautiful. Why not? It's all full of mold. Yes, this is an orange. I like the other one better. Like, uh, well, this is an orange that has I'd been sitting around beautiful. for about uh, oh, almost two weeks now. And that is where the beautiful world is. That beautiful world of mold. Where? <laughs> where? <laughs> well, now I think I, like that one I, better. I think probably you're having the same reaction that most people do when they see anything that's moldy. It's something they they say, eh, you yeah, know, throw it out, throw it out, <laughs> get rid of it. Fair but if you can. stop, if you stop to look at it with a microscope, you will find a fascinating world, of the like of which you can't see practically any other place in the whole world. It's, it's really fantastic. Way down under way there, way down, there down and that's nice what you and I are going to do. But before we do that, I'd like to introduce you to some of the other beautiful things that I have, <laughs> have in store for you. Uh, that's a very common one. Here, you see that bread? Isn't yes. that nice? Gee, that's beautiful. Well, you wait, you wait till you see that under the microscope. It'll be absolutely beautiful. This is Italian bread. You see what happened to it? Yes, yeah, awful. Very good. Now let's see what. Oh, here, here, here's a. Rather, oh no. Here's a rather nice specimen. Is that a pineapple? That's a pineapple. And that all was that, a pineapple. All that white stuff that you see all over there, and some of the green, is beautiful mold. Now let's. Oh, here's another beauty. Look at this. Oh. Isn't that nice? Cherries or? No grapes. grapes? You mean you can't recognize grapes when you see them? They just oh, with have, all that on them. Oh. They sort of have a fur coat. I wouldn't like to taste anything like that. Well, that that's not as interesting as some, I, I'll have to admit. There are some that are more beautiful than this, these fuzzy grapes. But, <laughs> but that's, see, there you are. You're making that same sound. Now, and here's applesauce. Now, applesauce is really quite interesting. You oh, I'd love it. to have some. <laughs> <laughs> oh, say, so here's some brown bread uh, that that is really... doesn't look brown, it's black. Well, it <laughs> and black. green and, and you orange. And you see green and orange and yellow and all it's those colorful. little colorful. <laughs> Color, mm. Colors all over, all because of moles. Here's mm. one that you would, you'd never be able to guess what this is in a thousand years. Pork and beans. <laughs> <laughs> pork and beans? Yes, pork and beans. Yellow? Yeah. And green. Well, there are a couple more here that, I, that I, I'll, I'll show you eventually. Oh, here's, here's the last one. This is cottage cheese. Black yeah, and green, green as well as white. Well, now you say, ich. Uh, anyone would. Anyone? <laughs> well, no, I wouldn't, because now that I've gotten to know uh, molds, what is it? Why can you take a piece of food like an orange and put it out, and in a couple of weeks, under the right conditions, it's going to look like this? What? What is this process? Yeah, what just, is a mold just anyway? Just mold. Now, what is a mold? Well, it seems to eat up the orange. Well, it or seems to get smaller. Than yeah. First of all, it's a plant. Now, when I say plant, what does that mean plant. to you? Plant. Yeah, plant. Well, when I think of the word plant, I think of flowers, and, which have seeds, mm -hmm. and green leaves, or any color leaves. Mm -hmm. And it's usually in dirt. Yeah, it has roots. And roots and yeah. stems. And how does it get its food? Well, the sunlight comes in, and also the, the stems, they pick in the water from mm -hmm. the ground. They combine, and then they make their own sugar from the carbon dioxide. Uh, carbohydrates, yeah. yes. And then and what, do they give off? what do they, they give off? They give off carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide and water vapor. Mm -hmm. Okay, well now... That is a typical definition of a plant, yet none of the things that you've said apply to the mold plant at all. It's a plant that doesn't have anything that to do it does, with, it doesn't with the normal have, plant. It doesn't have leaves, it doesn't have roots, it doesn't have stems, it doesn't have seeds, it doesn't have flowers. No, no it flowers. doesn't make its own food, uh, you know, gives it off the... It doesn't do much. You know. Now, uh, tell me just quickly about an animal. How does an animal go about... Uh, the well, same process. Well, I have a pet, yeah. a dog, and I usually feed him. That's how he gets okay. his food. He can't food. make his own food. No. Really, he's... Can you? Now, what does he do with the food as far as... Um... Well, he burns it, and then when he eats it... Yeah. He takes he in oxygen, it, yes. and this combines with the food, and what does he give off? 
He gives off carbon dioxide. And like we do. And water vapor. And water vapor. That's what the mold does. Does what my dog does yes. and what I do. That's yes. what I do. Yes. This is a strange sort of plant that can manufacture his own food. It uses the orange for the food. Yes, as you can see it. And shrunk so it down. let us now take a look at kind of the whole life cycle. We'll start out with what corresponds to the seed, but is not a seed. And we'll use we'll use this bread mold. This is the commonest one, and if, I'll show you later how to grow it, uh, because I think you may want oh, it's beautiful now, come on. Uh, I'll show you how to grow this, and let's take a look at the slide in which I have some of that over here. I'd like to see if you can make it look beautiful. Well, here, you see here under the microscope, mm -hmm. with that all lit up with these yes, little spotlights, that's a piece of bread. You can see mm -hmm. they're little sort of fuzzy things yes. on it. That well, the, the, the image from that goes up here through the microscope, up over to here, over here to a television camera, mm -hmm. which I have hooked up round over here to here as a monitor. And there's yes, what's right it. under the microscope. Watch, I'll move it. You see? Uh -huh. And that's, that's what, what that's what you're looking at is the bread mold. Now, what's so horrible yes. about that? Isn't that pretty? Yes, it has like a round part and then a stick, like yeah. a lollipop. <laughs> now, let me see. Something. Let me start with the seed. Now, here is what the whole thing looks like. You see um, this thing right here? Yes. That's well, the this round this part. this is the part that has the seeds on it. They're not really seeds, and I'll explain that in a minute. But from this now fall off little tiny dots. And I'm going to put on another slide with some of those little dots on it so that you can see what the little seed-like things look like. Mm. See, I sprinkled some of those seeds-like things on here, and I'll show you what they look like. There they are, a couple thousand of them. Now, what I'm talking about here this little tiny, well, I see that dot right there? Yes. That know. little tiny dot is probably a couple thousand spores. Oh, boy. <laughs> and spores. that's what the, the name of the, <laughs> of the um, mold seed is called. It's a spore. And it's not a true seed at all because when this spore lands on the right kind of food and there is moisture and the right temperature present, it sends out enzymes which begin to change the food on which it landed so that it can absorb the food into the spore and begin to grow. So it eats the food through the right. enzymes. Right, and it doesn't the have subsidy. the food built into the seed like the regular, like food. regular uh, uh, plants do. Now, let me get over That's to... That's why we find it on food, <laughs> because it needs to eat it. Okay, now I'm going up here to the edge because here is some special kind of uh, uh, nutrient um, food on which I planted some of these spores. Mm -hmm. And you see right here? Yes, they go out. From this direction. clump of spores now, and it could be just one, little things are growing out in all directions. Mm -hmm. Now I'll go over and take they a look, look like at roots. that. Yes, mm -hmm. well they do look like roots, but they're called by a new name. So you better learn a new name now. Mm -hmm. The name of these things is a hypha. H Y P H A. Hypha. It sends out a hypha. Mm -hmm. And when you get a whole bunch of hypha together, it's called mycelium. So one is a hypha and yes. together it's a mycelium. Right. So this is the network now that grows throughout all the nutrients in the plant, absorbing material constantly yes. from the from the plant and sending out these shoots and growing and it grows, grows very, grows very, very, grows. very fast. <laughs> now now I'm gonna put that other slide back on again. Put that one mm -hmm. of the bread. Some of these mycelia are underneath the surface of the food and they're absorbing this food and you and, and uh, and the plant is using it. Others <coughs> grow above the, the uh, food, and not always, sometimes they grow within the food, but in the case of bread mold, what you see on the surface, let's see if I can find a good section, how about, there we are, there's a couple oh. thousand of them. A couple thousand. <laughs> now, over here, see these sections right here? Mm -hmm. These little sort of lighter colored strands, those are the mycelium that are growing above and they form an aerial network out of which when the plant gets mature it will send a stalk and at the end of the stalk will be one of these things where more spores are. When it's ripe the spores go out and break into the into the wind and are sailed through all mm -hmm. corners of the earth. In fact as you and I are talking here that television monitor screen there is covered with spores of moles. <laughs> your nose is covered with them. My lungs, your lungs are Ooh, covered with them. Spores. Everything. Oh, and there's almost no place except in the most sterile kind of laboratories uh, where you can get away from mold spores. And the only thing that prevents them from actually sprouting and growing is the fact that they, it's either dry mm -hmm. or too cold or you, the you know they don't, they don't have the right kind of yeah. food. Mm -hmm. Yet, be careful because spores uh, can grow on the most amazing kinds of foods as you will see. Mm -hmm. 
Well, here's the life cycle then of a mold. Now that you've been introduced to them, I would like to uh, I would like to show you the film in which you can actually see this process, you know, taking place. Uh, uh, see right what's so beautiful about it. <laughs> and now you are going to have to tell me about molds, you see, because right. you're, you're now been introduced to them. Yes. And I have to run off some of the uh, white leader here first. So let me get that off before we... Okay. Now there is... Um, you recognize the squares of carrots. And see the mold growing over? Yes, all of a sudden it appears mm -hmm. on, the, on the carrot. Now this is a time-lapse picture, which means that they mm -hmm. are speeding up time, and you're seeing what one might take several days happen here in, say, a minute. It's turning dark in a minute. Yes, it's it's why is it turning dark? dark? Oh, it must be getting mature, has it Yes, said. it's getting mature. Now here's a piece of bread, okay. and watch right here on that corner. It's turning white. Yes, now. Huh? Yes. See how it's beginning to grow? It goes fast. Yeah, it goes quite fast. Of course, this is time lapse, don't forget. Yes. You but can really go fast. What is the what is the mold eating? It's eating the bread. Yes. And so whenever you store, especially carbohydrates, mm -hmm. but whenever you store any kind of food in moist, warm places, you know mold's going to grow. Mm -hmm. And that's why you put uh, food in the refrigerator. Yes, yeah, to preserve it. Yeah, to keep mm -hmm. it cool. Now, here is the here, what are these called? The high fructose. Yeah, and a whole bunch of them growing like this? Yes, mycelium. Mycelium. Here they are growing they underneath growing the surface. The surface. It's and very much out. It's something like a root, isn't it? Yes. Now this is growing through a solution of agar, uh, which is a, a special um, kind of form uh, so that they can see through it at the same time it will nourish the plant. Mm -hmm. There, you see how this one growing along? Yes. Yeah. Well now, the uh, reason I said this plant was kind of more like an animal is that these little tubes that go through the food material mm -hmm. give out enzymes and enzymes are the kind of material that your dog and you have inside of you to help digest your food. This plant gives out this enzyme material and here it is uh, after it has absorbed some of the nutrients go, as the material is flowing through the tubes that are that are inside. Um, this is an individual hyphen, right? Mm -hmm. and you see it going right through. Yes. And this is why the mold uh, will only grow in very moist conditions because some 90% of the mold is moisture. Mm. So it needs a good supply of moisture. Easy, right? In fact, uh, mold is usually a problem in, in moist, damp places such as the tropics. It'll grow on everything. Yeah. Rifles, uh, leather, <laughs> uh, lenses, uh, of course, all kinds of food, canvas, uh, people, people. You know, there are people. molds which grow on people too, sure. In fact, uh, I was reading someplace the other day that, that moles will even grow on such things as earwax. Earwax? Earwax. Oh, <laughs> In fact, that's what's put as a form of, of uh, mole. Anyway, you can see now that there's kind of a life cycle uh, of a mold and uh, uh, sending out mm -hmm. these uh, subsurface mm -hmm. mycelium in order to absorb food. Is that the bread? Now, here's the bread. Now, watch what happens to the bread. Mm -hmm. Now, why is that? Well, it must be getting mature. Yes, and there, there are the little. Uh, oh, yeah. You see the round tops and how it goes in the bottom. Mm -hmm. They're shooting up. Now, here come the spore stalks, I call them. The scientists have very uh, technical names for these. And there they come out, and here's what happens now to one of those spore stalks as it comes out. Now, watch. It's getting larger. It gets larger and begins to swell. It has a sort of, uh, is, is quite sticky and, and very liquid-like. And then as it gets mature, there's what it looks like. And each one of these, mm -hmm. oh, how those little bumps, I got a little light here. Each one of those little bumps is not a spore, and that's a whole clump of them. Uh -huh. There are more coming right at us. Now there's the okay. same sort of bread mold you see that we were looking at before. One is yeah. Now here, watch this. Here they speeded. I speeded the time lapse up a little bit so that you can watch the process take place very quickly. Oh. You see <laughs> how they the send up they first the mycelium out. above the surface, and then it all turns dark mm. as as, as they begin to ripen. That's mm -hmm. right. So it has uh, almost uh, uh, a oh, fireworks effect. Yes. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. What did you say? You said yeah, it was I did beautiful. say it was beautiful. Yes. I didn't think so. All right. Now there, this whole sequence is a very worms? interesting one. Yes, these are nematodes, very small microscopic worms that live in water and in soil and lots of other places. Mm -hmm. 
But these strands that you see in the background here are a form of mold that capture oh. these worms and eat them. How do they capture them? Well, you watch. They, these worms crawl in and out throughout the mold strands looking for food. And when a worm sticks his head through a little noose, you'll see one coming up here in a minute, then the noose automatically tightens on the worm, and the more the worm tries to move, the tighter the thing gets, oh. and the enzymes are sent out from the uh, mold, uh, I think there's one of those circles. See, there's a yeah. sort of circle thing. There's another the one loop, up here. Yeah. Now you watch, and this one, he's going to stick his head inside one of these, and he's going to get trapped. Oh. There, see one? Yeah, yeah. He's trapped. He stuck his head ah. through here, and this begins to squeeze on him, and pretty soon the mold now begins to absorb the food. Oh. There you can see how he's trapped. The enzymes. Yeah, and the enzymes now will eventually digest that worm. Not only do they eat food, but they eat animals. Well, so they eat all kinds of food. So they don't eat humans. <laughs> well, yeah. they, they do eat humans if they would get the chance. <laughs> in fact, uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Oh, it's kind of a gruesome. Hey, I'll put his head through another noose. <laughs> yeah. Boy, he's really in trouble. Okay, well, that's... That's, uh... Now, I want to I point out to you that one of the words that you used as you were looking at the mold was what? The enzymes. Be beautiful, you said. Oh, beautiful, yes. Yes, you said beautiful. Yeah, I, I never thought that I'd ever say that about a mold. Well, now let me see if I can show you how you could grow molds. Now, here's what you do. You take some bread mm -hmm. and put moisture around on it and put it in a closed mm -hmm. container, but leave it open to the, to the uh, air for just a, an hour or so and then put it back on. And very, very quickly, you will have bread mold growing over it. Except beautiful. that I think if you try it, it won't work. Uh, it will work for me. No, because it I think what you will do is you'll probably use bread like this. Well, I'm sure this is the kind of bread, bread you have now. Yes. Well, look, we read what it says on there. Calcium, Calcium propanate, propanate. Aided to retard spoilage. Yes. Oh, then it wouldn't mold yeah. very fast. You see, when, when uh, in the olden days, bread used mm -hmm. to uh, mildew or, or uh, get um, full of mold quite easily, so they now put chemicals in the bread to prevent this from taking place. And while this Italian bread, you know, it's, uh, is not, uh, it does not have that in it. It was Italian bread. This, this happened very quickly. Mm -hmm. But the, the bread, this kind of bread, uh, has a mold inhibitor, and I had to put this in here for uh, about 10 days before anything would uh, happen at all. And it's now just beginning to be moldy. And this, you see what happened to the, that other bread mm -hmm. that did not yes. have this stuff in it. It, of course, They uh, put something in to retard it, and now we want yes. to... So I, no, if, you're, if you're going to try it, try it with the rolls or, or mm -hmm. sweet rolls or something like this, mm -hmm. or check the ingredients on it to see that yes. there's not a mold inhibitor. Okay? Right. All right. So that's how you grow molds. Sometimes now, it grows and I don't even want it to grow. Now what about the, the so far, every time I've mentioned molds up until we saw the film, yes. you were kind of, uh, oh, down your nose at a little bit. You said, <laughs> molds. But I think, I, think we should, I think we should take a look at them now with the idea that, that there are some very valuable aspects to molds. For example, valuable? yes, let's say this orange was sitting on a tree and mm -hmm. finally fell down to the ground. Mm -hmm. Now that orange would sit there for a long time and pretty soon all the oranges would be all over the ground. But that isn't what happens, is it? No, they, they, begin, they, take them. they begin to decay. Mm -hmm. They get all full of and they get full of molds, and the molds mm -hmm. utilize the, the energy uh, that's, uh, that's in the orange and finally uh, give back the nutrients back mm -hmm. to the soil again. It's like a fertilizer. Yes, it exactly the, soil. the same thing. Now, bacteria do some of the same things, mm -hmm. but molds are very important in this connection. And if this bread were, were something that were just sitting out, you know, someplace, why pretty soon the bread would be all gone. Oh. Put it in your backyard in the yeah, dirt. Yeah, and and uh, uh, molds will eventually get rid of it. And you remember I said, you said that you hope they didn't eat people? Yes. Well, I'm afraid that... Uh, we're uh, a very good nutrient for all kinds of things, and uh, in the same way that, that uh, meat would decay, we probably would too, and molds will not grow. <laughs> so don't. <laughs> now, hey, by the way, if you grow molds, you don't have to be afraid of them, because almost no mold that you will grow in your house is going to be dangerous. Even though yeah. that you're breathing, all, you and I are breathing in millions <laughs> of these spores all the time, they are not particularly harmful, so you don't have to worry about them. All right, okay? my friend. <laughs> okay. Now, some of the other positive aspects of, of uh, molds that you hadn't thought about, there's nice cheese. Blue cheese. Yes. You see all that black in there? Mold. Is that mold? Yes, it's mold. <laughs> when they make the cheese, after they've had it processed, mm -hmm. they then put the mold in there and let it grow, and that's what gives the flavor to the cheese. I never think so that you're, we eat cheese. We well, eat there the you mold. see, you yeah. even like it because that's what gives the flavor to the blue cheese. And in fact, here's one I'm sure that you've eaten many times. 
And where's the mold in that? Well, there don't happen to be any molds in here at the moment, but you see all those holes? Yes. Well, when, after they've made the Swiss cheese, they then put a mold in here, and the mold begins to grow and gives off carbon dioxide. Oh, it makes the holes. And makes the holes, and then when oh. they later on, of course, price, process it and slice it up, why you don't see any of that, but you do see the carbon dioxide. Well, it helps us in that. Well, now let's look at some of the other uh, molds uh, through the microscope. Okay. Uh, all right? Mm -hmm. We've looked at the bread mold, but now, and I don't think you're going to be able to identify which mold I'm going to be doing, but I'll take the, uh, the bread mold out of here and, and uh, put up another one. And this one is applesauce. And by the way, it, it really won't make too much difference what kind of food you plant uh, with, with certain... Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Oh, yes. Oh, what did you say? Oh, yes. It's <laughs> you pretty. Said it was Believe pretty? it or not. <laughs> All right. Believe it or not. There is applesauce, and on it is probably growing a bread mold. By this, I mean there are... The bread mold can adapt itself to all kinds of carbohydrates, oh. and applesauce is carbohydrate in it, just as bread does, you see. So that... It has little white things on top of them. Well, now let's see. Let me get over to the edge here. Uh, over here once and... Yeah, there's a pretty good stalk right yes. there. See it? Here, let me show you. See, here, here's the mature spore uh, vessel, you know, and here's yes. the stalk, and here are the little tiny spores that are coming out. And every time you see one of these things that looks like a sponge, it's a whole supply of, of uh, spore. And look at them. Gee, billions. Zillions. And billions. And billions and zillions. Upon billions, 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 billions of spores, <laughs> all this time growing from applesauce. Mm. And it, what kind of spores or what kind of mold is going to grow on what, whatever it is depends on entirely what happens to fall on it from the air, you see? And as long as it has the kind of material that, that the, the, uh, the spore can use, it'll start to grow. Mm -hmm. So that while it's, it is not true that only certain foods will produce certain kinds of, um, of uh, mold, there are some that are peculiar, and I'll show you some in a minute. Here's cottage cheese. In other words, one of the things that, that, uh, that a uh, mold needs is the proper uh, acid content. And in a moment, I'll, sh I'll show you. Now, there's mm. a beautiful one. Isn't that nice? Look there's at that. There's a lot of them. Yes. You see how this kind of case, there are a lot of white ones? Mm -hmm. Those white ones are what? Well, they're not mature yet. They're not mature yet, probably. I'm no real great expert on them, <laughs> but uh, uh, probably those are not mature. Now, what are those strands? That would be the hypha. Uh, each one, a strand, yes, and the whole group? But the whole group would be mycelium. Mycelium, yes. There you can see some kind of down below, and then others up above. Now, there, oh, there's a whole group of white yes, ones. There's a lot of them. Yeah, this is cottage cheese, a very mm -hmm. good medium for growing mold, as you can see. Yes. Now, in this case, I, I really wonder, you, you see this, uh, this one right here? Mm -hmm. Now, th some of those look yes. like the spores are already mature, and I'm wondering whether it couldn't be a white, a white mature spore, see? while the shiny ones, the ones that aren't quite so big, are the immature ones. I'm not sure. In fact, I was asking some men from, from the Pfizer company who came over to help me with moles, and they're the one who gave me the film, by the way, and they were saying that there are only probably three or four scientists in the whole United States who could look at that and tell you what kind of mold it is. It's very, very specialized and highly skillful sort of activity. Anyway, there's mm -hmm. cottage cheese. There's a lot of them at the edge. Now, here comes another one, this time on sauerkraut. And sauerkraut is obviously very acidy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, you can tell from the sort of uh, tangy taste of it. And whenever something has a sort of acid in it, it seems that a penicillium type of mold will grow on it. Now, I didn't say penicillin, I said a penicillium. That's a whole group, of, a whole family of molds. And here's an example of one. This is on sauerkraut. And notice it looks quite different than the bread mold, doesn't it? Yes, instead of uh, the background of it. Yeah, well, instead of having such thick... Uh, mycelium, they're much, oh, yeah. it's much thinner, and the color is a sort of blue-green. Whenever you see a blue-green color, you can be pretty sure that it's one of the members of the mold that's in the penicillium family. Now, the, we talked about the fact that molds help uh, uh, decay things and, you know, and get rid of them. Here's another example. In, in, in case of penicillium, when this kind of mold, now there's a, isn't that beautiful? Yes, now, come on, now, you have to admit that. Yes, uh, it is. Let me, let me point when this my mycelium grows underneath the surface, sometimes it gives off other materials, as well as the, uh, remember I told you about uh, the fact that it gives off carbon dioxide and moisture, mm -hmm, yes. but sometimes byproducts are given off in the process here, and one of those byproducts is antibiotics, penicillin. 
Oh, we get the penicillin from, from the yes. the, from mm -hmm. the mold as it grows. And penicillin things, is important. Yes, and other Very kinds important. of aerolomycin, streptomycin, and so all these antibiotics <laughs> come as a byproduct of the grow, moth, of the moth growth. <laughs> <laughs> the growth of the mold in, in the medium and the citric acid is another one. So here is the... It's in soda. Yes, the, that that uh, sort of uh, byproduct of the moles and yes, soda. Yes, in fact, mm. uh, <laughs> some companies uh, have good too. <laughs> whole whole laboratories who do nothing but grow moles in order to get the chemicals. Oh. Now I also told you that that um, uh, moles can eat practically anything. Yes, you did say that, including leather. Well, here's a piece of leather, and it's uh, gold on that. And well, I put it in a moist, warm place, mm -hmm. and sure enough, s some moles grew on it. Now let me get to the outer edge. Here's the edge of the leather, like that, see? see? Now I'll go to the other edge over here. And there, yes, growing out from the edge of the leather, mm -hmm. is a mole. Look at it. They're all growing out. Yeah, now let me go along here and you'll see. Go along this way, this way. There, see them? Yes, there's a lot of the You spore recognize cases. your friends? It's like the bread the mold, bread. isn't it? There, yes, now you can see it. It's not like the other one. No, it's not like the penicillium. No, the it's more like the bread mold. Mm -hmm. In fact, look, all along the edge here, The mold is growing. Now, let me go back here to these. And even on the surface, there's the surface of the leather, yeah. you see, with the little holes and things that you recognize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if I look around here, I think I can show you. Where are the molds? On there. There they are. <laughs> they're growing right up from the, from the leather itself. Only this they're time, they're sticking this. up, you see. Uh -huh. Let me turn out some of the lights here. And they, uh, let's see. There, now you can see that there's a sh sort of a shadow. Mm -hmm. There they are. And now you're looking right That's down the on the top case. of them. Yeah. Those are the spore cases. Those are the spore, uh, well, spore stalks, I call Store. them. <laughs> and there is actually some of the spore falling on the surface of the leather oh. where it will grow again. Now, if this is a, a thing that you want to happen, fine. The leather would probably be disintegrated. Mm -hmm. In other cases, you have to put preventative to prevent the spore from growing or keep it cool or, or keep it uh, um, uh, dry. And in the case of leather, you keep it dry. Anyway, when you first came in, you... Uh, you complained about the moles that you yes, didn't I like them, I and yet I think by shouldn't talk before I find out what it's all about. <laughs> well, I think you'll find by now that moles are very, very interesting, very beneficial, and I think quite beautiful. Don't you? Yes, quite look, beautiful. Look at them here on this piece of leather.